Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Sometimes people talk about how they want to start their own business. Others will talk about just joining a new business that's already in existence. But either way, when you look at things from a spiritual perspective, when it comes to business, you need to know that God is watching and God wants us to be prosperous, but he also doesn't want us to be foolish. And so today we are going to look at some scriptures to keep us encouraged as well as to warn us that it is best just to trust in the Lord and not be so trusting in people, places, and things that we know full well are worldly, ungodly, unrighteous. Okay. Joshua 1, 8, this book of the law, right? The Bible, it's a good reference guide. It is a def it is definitely the type of book that you want to get into when it comes to dealing with people, when it comes to dealing with your spiritual walk, when you have some questions about all sorts of things related to spirituality, it is a wise book. To ignore it is foolish. Joshua one eight, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. When we're in business, we're not quoting a bunch of scriptures. So we're not even talking too much about the Bible, unless, of course, you have a Christian business or some type of business of faith. But what you are doing is thinking, though, about what you've read and you are applying scripture to your modern day business. Isaiah forty-eight seventeen says, Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, thy Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord, thy God, which teacheth thee to profit. Oh, so it's not just me, right, who is uh, learning about making money. God teaches. Oh, really? How does he teach? Well, first of all, you have to be open to listening to that Holy Spirit. If you accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, then the Holy Spirit is talking to you every now and again. That isn't just your voice that talks, but it's also the Spirit. And if you prayed, you are more susceptible to hearing from the one true God. And he does talk about business. I'm a witness. OK, I am the Lord, thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. So for anyone who thought that God wasn't talking to me about money or about a business model or about investments or about savings or anything like that, uh, that individual is stagnant in their spiritual growth and they lack understanding. God does speak to me about money and business and opportunity and investments and partnering and advertisements and all sorts of things because I pray those kind of prayers. It's not just about family and friends and problems and uh, things that you typically hear on NM Enterprise 7, but I also talk about business, okay? And I also listen to the one true God about business. So, Third John 2 Beloved, I wish above all things, and this is what I'm wishing for all of you all listeners. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. And I pray that you all are doing the same for me. Deuteronomy 8, 18, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. Notice it is he that give power to get wealth. Once again, it's not all about us and what we think and what we believe. And uh, I'm just going into this business because this is what I want. When you are a believer, you are going into business because you have walked with the Lord and the Lord has given you some insight and you know for a fact that you are walking according to the will of God. That's what gives us confidence. That's what causes us to say, it doesn't matter who's criticizing. It doesn't matter what they think. We know what God said. Let me read that again. But thou shalt remember, right? Even in business, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God for it is he. Okay. Okay. 
Stop giving so much credit to yourself, some of you all. But it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy fathers as it is this day. It's he that gives us power to get wealth. And getting wealth comes in all sorts of ways. Some of you all got various income streams. It's not just about a J-O-B. And for some folks, you don't have the traditional J-O-B. God gave you the wisdom to be able to get money in all sorts of ways. Okay? Some of you all, you have witnessed this sort of thing with me over the years. So as much as some people, they believe that this is the way to get money and this is the only way, other people will say, no, there are so many different ways. But if you are unwilling to check out all the different ways to make money because you have your own personal reservations or issues or what have you, then that's on you. If I'm talking to the Lord about whatever it is that I'm going through financially, then he is going to give me some ways that are not necessarily traditional. Okay. Proverbs 3, 5 through 10. Trust in the Lord. That's what I've done and that's and I continue to do. And that's what I hope that those of you all who are aspiring business owners, entrepreneurs will do, as well as those who are joining existing businesses. Trust in the Lord with all, with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. I'm not leaning on my own understanding. I'm sitting back there thinking, well, my understanding is that in order to make money, I have to go this way and I have to do this and I don't want to offend these people and I need, please, that's your own understanding. I'm trusting in the Lord. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. He's directing my path. Not the person who's critical, not the one who thinks I should do this and I should do that. I am allowing the Lord to direct my path. And usually the Lord leads you to the right people who know a bit more than you do and who know how to work some things out so that you become profitable or, or so that you can be prof or so that you can be able to increase your revenue and get more profits. Okay. Poor people, they're not going to make you prosperous. If I'm sitting there in a room full of poor people, the only one who might in that room be able to give a bit of wisdom is the one who lost everything. But remember, he had much at one point, you see. But the rest of them who never had and possibly will never have. Those are the ones that we stay away from when it comes to talking business. Now, they may be good about giving you some advice when it comes to family, when it comes to the workplace. They might be okay when it comes to uh, encouraging you every now and again. But when it comes to business, mm -mm, we, we can't talk to poor people about business. Matter of fact, some of them, and I've done this sort of thing when I was just starting out, their eyes glaze over because they don't know what you're talking about. You start talking about things like income streams and uh, target market and uh, just all sorts of, of uh, debits and credits. And they're looking at you like, huh, what? So that's already a sign right there. Do, do not get into your business, literally your business with folk um, that are poor. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. But be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Let me say that again. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. That's why some people lose. Like that one in the room who was once rich but became poor. He was wise in his own eyes. If he's, if he's transparent with you. He didn't fear the Lord. And he sure wasn't departing from evil. If that meant he was going to make some more money. Hey, he was down for the evil. He was down for walking on the dark side. He was down for selling his soul to the devil. Oh yeah, we got those that's out there. And so we see them and we learn a few things, but we don't want to be like them. It shall be health to thy navel and morrow to thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits. Oh, somebody got an attitude up. Oh, click off the message. Here we go. 
No, don't click off the message just yet. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Hey, I was skeptical when they were saying this sort of thing in the church, right? And I'm still skeptical at times, depending on what it is that they're asking for. And at times, if I don't think that the Lord is with that person, I'm not going to bless them. I'm going to just listen and watch. And then when I know that I know because I'm doing what I'm supposed to, according to the will of the Lord, then I'm going to jump on board. It depends on what the project is. It depends on what um, is happening. It depends on what type of benefits, I mean, all sorts of things. But either way, the Lord, if I'm listening to him, he may even say it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether they're getting or not getting, whether you're benefiting or not benefiting. I want you to get a first fruits. Okay. And so you do. If you're obedient, you do. If you're not, you don't. And then it's slower. The prophets are slower in coming in. Sometimes you are struggling. Sometimes you don't have anything because you didn't honor the Lord with your first fruits. Everything is coming in and going out, coming in and going out, and you have nothing to go and do anything extra with. So you heard that. Now here's First Chronicles twenty two thirteen for you. Then shall thou prosper if thou takest heed to fulfill the statutes and judgments which the Lord charged Moses with concerning Israel. Be strong and of good courage. Dread not nor be dismayed. Sometimes people aren't strong when it comes to business and that's why business sometimes fails too for some. And then some people are not of good courage either. They just aren't brave. They, they're fearful of everybody. Matter of fact, some of them will stay in their rooms. They won't ever bother to talk to anyone about their business. They won't pass out any business cards. They won't let you know that they're even in business. And it's hard to prosper if nobody knows that you're in business. It's hard to prosper when you're fearful of people. You're fearful of rejection. You're fearful of what they might say. They're, you're fearful of so many things. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Oh, the ungodly loves giving advice too, just like the poor man. And they love being critical too, just like the poor man. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper okay real simple i don't think i need to break that down let's move on to one that is of great length this particular scripture is deuteronomy 28 i'm going to pull out one and six eight and 11 through 13 here we go and it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken dil diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, once again, the business owner, the entrepreneur, the employee, the manager, supervisor, what have you, they're listening to the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shall thou be in the city. Notice, you're blessed when you listen to the voice of the Lord. Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruits of thy body, and the fruits of thy ground, and the fruits of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep blessed shall be thy basket and thy store blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out the lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thine hand unto and he shall bless thee in the land which the lord thy god giveth thee 
Yes, Lord. Woohoo. All right. Reading on. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruits of thy body, and in the fruits of thy cattle, and in the fruits of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. Some of you people in property management or real estate, or you own something. Ooh, Jesus, you should be shouting. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain unto thy land in his season, and to bless all the work of thine hand, and thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou, ooh, I love this, and thou shalt not borrow. Woo-wee, yes. And the Lord shall make thee thy head and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. Hallelujah. Thank you. If thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. Somebody, this particular scripture, scriptures should resonate within you. It all boils down to listening to the Lord, doesn't it? I don't really want to do that. Listen to the Lord. Ah, that's going to be an inconvenience. Listen to the Lord. Oh, that's going to cost too much money. Listen to the Lord. The Lord, he moves on us to do some uncomfortable things. He moves on us. And I'm a witness. He moves on us to go against the grain. Sometimes that business model gets flipped upside down. Sometimes you end up going into positions that, well, wait a minute. I thought I I didn't qualify for this. I thought I wasn't able. And then you realize, wait a minute, I can do this. And you end up making more money than what you would have made had you stayed in your comfortable spot. See, oh, yes. I mean, the farmer, the farmer sits up there and he says to himself, I want some crops. I want some crops to to grow. I want them to increase this year. And so he knows what he has to do in order to get those crops to uh, to grow. Right. And if he is hearkening unto the voice of the Lord, then those crops are really going to sprout. It's that that sudden thought, that idea at times that the Lord brings to us. And we know that we know that we're winning because we go, we test it out. And uh, lo and behold, if it doesn't work, (laughs) Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you. I know that that didn't come from me because I was hesitant about doing that. I was fighting up against it. I had an attitude about it. But now that I come back to this thing after it popped into my mind, I'm all right with it. Thank you, Jesus. You see, you give credit to the Lord when those types of things happen. You don't give credit to yourself. You know, you don't go around telling your family members and your friends, your sisters and brothers in Christ that, yes, it was I that came up with this great idea. It was I. No, no, Jesus, help us. No, it was God. Matthew six thirty three. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. See, you're seeking the kingdom of God. His righteousness. And then listen to this. And all these things shall be added unto you. So I'm looking at the Lord first. I'm sitting there. Aren't you supposed to be working? I'm sitting here right now. There's no rush to get certain things done. I'm sitting here right now. What are you doing? I'm meditating. I'm thinking about some things. I'm waiting for the Lord to speak to me. Because right now I'm confused today. I'm not having a good day. I got some issues. My head hurts. My stomach hurts and everything else. But I got to be here. So I got to sit here for a moment. Give me a moment. Some folks will even put their fingers up and say, give me a moment. They need a moment to settle down, to get their thoughts in order. They might need a moment to take something for that stomach, for that head. Give them a moment. Lord Jesus. I'm seeking the Lord on this. I want to be right. I got my mind on eternity. I know that this life is temporal. I know that this business is temporal. I know that I'm not going to always have the energy to put into this business. Lord, give me the strength because I need it right now. I thank you for what you've already done. Please forgive me of my sins. Lord Jesus, I want to do right. You see, you give yourself that moment. doesn't matter what your title is in business. Give yourself that moment with God. Nurture that spirit. You nurture the man. You nurture the body. Nurture the spirit. Proverbs 16, 3. Commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. I'm committing my work to the Lord. I know that it was nothing but God that gave me the idea. If it wasn't for God giving me breath in my body, I wouldn't be here to do this work. Lord Jesus. Proverbs 24, 3 and 4. Through wisdom is an house builded. And by understanding, it is established. 
and by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. I love that. And this should be encouragement for all of you all. First Kings 2, 2 and 3. I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, that thou mayest prosper in all that thou do doest or doest, and whithsoever thou turnest thyself. Time and time again, we're here and prosper. Now, I don't know where people get this idea that God wants you to be poor. I don't hear that. <laughs> I don't hear that, Lord Jesus. But haters, though, want you to be poor. Oh, yeah. Haters want you to be poor because they're poor. I don't know what I'm supposed to do in order to get some money. I don't know. I don't know if this is right. I don't know if this is good. I don't know. Okay, then stay broke, busted, and disgusted then because I'm, I don't know what else to tell you. You see, you try to give some people some advice on how to get some money. They got some excuses. I don't feel like getting up. That's too early. Okay. Uh, maybe you want to do this. What? Do what? That, that requires my car, don't it? Well, I mean, you said you needed extra money. Uh-uh. Let's look at something else. Okay. Well, what about this? Mm, I might do that. What an investment. No, honey. Uh-uh. I'm not investing in nothing. Well, you got some money. I got some money, but I'm not investing. Okay. Well, what about this? Oh, how much time is that going to take? Well, what about this? And what about that? Okay, you know what? I give up. Because everything that I mentioned to you, you don't want to do. Now, what about this? All you got to do is play games. All you got to do is listen to music. And all you have to do is uh, do some surveys. You willing to do that? Oh, I guess I will. Okay, you know there's not that much money in it. That's okay. Uh-huh, the lazy person, they'll go ahead. They'll take it. I'll take it then. I don't have to do too much of anything, right? I'm telling you, some people is going through a lot because of the simple fact is, is that they don't want to step out of their box. Now, if I only want to make 20 extra dollars a month, I can do that, right? I can make $20 extra a month playing, playing some games and watching some videos and taking some surveys. But if I want to make 200 and some dollars extra a month, I'm going to have to do some other things. And if I want to make $2,000 extra a month, I'm going to have to do even more, you see. So it all depends on what is it that you need and how much of it <laughs> you need. Job 36, 11, if they obey, obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. Romans 12, 11 says, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Colossians 4, 1 says, Masters, give unto your servants that which is just and equal, knowing that ye also have a master in heaven. And that is it, because I know some people need to tend to their business. I thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Be encouraged. Blessings to those of you all who are aspiring to be entrepreneurs, those who are already business owners, as well as those who have joined existing businesses. Many, many, once again, blessings to you. As you can clearly hear in the word of the Lord, God wants you to prosper. So forget what those others have said about being broke and all of that other stuff and being poor and being humble and being all this, that, and the other. You can be humble, but you don't have to be broke being humble. So <laughs> please do check the description box for anything that might be of interest. You've been listening to YouTube in Enterprise 7, and we do welcome donations. So by all means, give. Thank you.